Hi friends, welcome to PSC Collegiate English. Today, let's discuss the poem Daddy by Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath was born on 1932 and she died in 1963. Her pseudonym was Victoria Lucas. She is an American poet and she is a pioneer of confessional poetry. She has won Pulitzer Prize for the collected poems. Some of her famous works are poem, po the poem poetry collections are the Colossals and Other Poems, Ariel, Crossing the Water, Winter Trees. Collected prose and novels are The Bell Jar, Letters Home, Correspondences from 1950 to 1963, Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams, Short Stories, Prose and Diary Excerpts. Children's Book, The Bed Book, uh, The It Doesn't Matter Suit, Mrs. Cherry Kitchen and all. Speaking about her style, Sylvia Plath was one of the most dynamic and admired poets of the 20th century. She committed suicide at the age of 30. Her verse is an attempt to catalogue despair, violent emotion and obsession with death. Her densely autobiographical poems explore her own mental anguish, her troubled marriage with Ted Hughes, her unresolved conflicts with her parents and her own vision of herself. Now, all these themes are being reflected in her confessional poetry. The last works, we are giving importance to the last works because uh, this poem, Daddy, was written just four months before her death. During her last three years, Plath abandoned the restraints and convictions that had bound much of her early work. She wrote with great speed, producing poems of stark self-revelation and confession. The anxiety and confusion and doubt that haunted her were transmitted into verse of great power and pathos born on flashes of incisive wit. Now coming to the uh, poem introduction as such, Daddy is a confessional poem. It was written on October 12, 1982, which was four months before her death and one month after her separation from Ted Hughes. The poem was published posthumously in Ariel during 1965. The poem employs controversial metaphors of Holocaust to explain Plath's complex relationship with her father Otto Plath, who died shortly after her eighth birthday. The poem is cryptic and widely anthologized poem in American literature. In Plath's own words, when she describes about this poem, I quote, Here is a poem spoken by a girl with an Electra complex. Her father died while she thought he was God. Her case is complicated by the fact that her father was also a Nazi and her mother was possibly Jewish. In the daughter, the two streams marry and paralyze each other. She has to act out the awful little allegory once over before she is free of it." Unquote. Coming to the poetic technique that's employed in the poem, just a position is used when two contrasting objects or ideas are placed in conversation with one another in order to emphasize that contrast. Here, innocence versus youthful emotions and pain are juxtaposed. Metaphors and similes appear throughout the poem. Coming to the themes of the poem, uh, it deals with oppressive nature of father-daughter relationship, freedom from oppression, and life and death. Okay, let's uh, read the poem and understand it line by line. You do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white barely daring to breathe or a chew. Daddy, I have to kill you. You died before I had time. Marble heavy, a bag full of God, ghastly statue with one grey toe, big as a Frisco seal. And a head in the freakish Atlantic, where it pours bean green over blue, in the waters of beautiful Nosset, I used to pray to recover you, Ach do. In the German tongue, in the Polish town, scrapped flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. But the name of the town is common, 
my Pollack friend. Says there are a dozen or two, so I never could tell where you put your foot, your root. I never could talk to you. The tongue struck me, struck in my jaw. It struck in a barbed wire snare. I, 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 I could hardly speak. I thought every German was you and the language obscene. An engine, an engine chuffing me off like a Jew. A Jew to Dacho, Ostrich, Belson. I began to talk like a Jew. I think I may well be a Jew. The snows of Tyrol, the clear beer of Vienna, are not very pure or true. With my gypsy ancestress and my weird luck, and my tarot pack and my tarot pack, I may be a bit of a Jew. Panzer man, Panzer man, oh you, I have always been scared of you. With your luff your gobbledygoo, and your neat mushtag, and your Aryan eye bright blue, not God but a swastika. So black, no sky could squeak through. Every woman adores a fascist, the boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute like you. You stand at the blackboard, Daddy, in the picture I have of you. A cleft in your chin instead of your foot, but no less a devil for that. No, not any less the black man who bit my pretty red heart in two. I was ten when they buried you. At twenty, I tried to die and get back, back, back to you. I thought even the bones would do. But they pulled me uh, out of the sack and they struck me together with glue. But they pulled me out of the sack and they struck me together with glue. And then I knew what to do. I made a model of you. A man in black with a main camp look and a love of the rack and the screw. And I said, I do, I do. So daddy, I am finally through. The black telephones off at the root. The voices just can't warm through. I have killed one man, I have killed two, the vampire who said he was you and drank my blood for a year, seven years, if you want to know. Daddy, you can lie back now. There is a stake in your fat black heart and the villagers never liked you. They are dancing and stamping on you. They always knew it was you. Daddy, daddy, you bastard, I am through. Now let's go for stanza wise summary. The black shoe is a metaphor for the father. She has been trapped for 30 years and the narrator is about to escape. In the second stanza she says, but she can free herself by killing her daddy who does resemble the poet's father Otto Plath who died when Sylvia Plath was eight years old. His toe had turned black from gangrene. He eventually had to have his leg amputated due to complications of diabetes. The bizarre surreal image is built up. His toe is as big as a seal. The grotesque image of her father has fallen like a statue. Coming to the third stanza, the statue's head is in the Atlantic of the coast of Norset Beach, Cape Cod, where the family once used to holiday. Now, this is also an example of autobiographical poem because she makes use of the father figure. She makes use of the places where the family used to live. They moved on to Poland during the Second World War. There is a mix of fact and fiction. Poland has been raised in many wars, adding strength to the idea that Germany, which uh, represents her father, had demolished many lives. The narrator addresses the father as you. Direct address brings the reader close to the action. Plath is hinting at a lack of communication of instability and paralysis. The use of wire snare increases the tension. The German I is repeated four times as if her self-worth is wounded. The father is seen as a powerful icon. Coming to the seventh stanza, the narrator comments that she is on a death train which is taking her to the concentration camps 
and one of Nazi death factories where millions of Jews were brutally gassed and cremated. Then she speaks about moving to Austria, which is Plath's mother's country. The narrator reinforces her identity. She says she's a bit of Jew because she carries a tarot pack of cards and has gypsy blood in her. Coming to the ninth stanza, one of the aims of the Nazi was to breed out unwanted genetic strains to produce the perfect German. The Luftwaffe is German Air Force and Panzel is the name of German tank corps. Sylvia Plath incorporates all these terms in her poems. Father is referred to as swastika. Now swastika is the symbol of the Nazi. It refers to the air raids over England during the war when Luftwaffe bombed many cities and turned the skies black. Again, we can see that throughout the poem, she gives us images. She takes us to different, different places. With each stanza, the environment or the situation gets shifted and the reader must be ready to go with the flow of the poem. In the 11th stanza, the reader is taken to a kind of classroom where daddy stands. He has a cleft chin. Now, Sylvia Plath's father, Otto Plath, was a professor and even her own mother was his student. Coming to the 12th stanza, she says, her father tore her apart, reached inside her and left her torn and divided self. When her daddy died, she felt a rage against God. She tried to commit suicide when she was 20. Then again, uh, here again the autobiographical uh, element of her poem come. Sylvia Plath uh, attempted uh, suicide at the age of 10. Later after 10 years she, st uh, she tried to commit suicide at the age of 20 and only in the third attempt unfortunately she died. So she is uh, uh, commemorating the suicide attempt which she tried when she was 20 years old. The narrator is pulled out of the sack, sack and they stick her back together with glue. The doctors cured her after her failed suicide attempt, but never was seen again. The girl creates a model which resembles Plath's father. Coming to the 14th stanza, Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes are married. Now that is denoted by the words, I do, I do. The words which bride repeats during the marriage ceremony when the priest asks if the bride is ready to marry the bridegroom. She addresses daddy again. There will be no more communication with the past. Now she says, she tells her father that she has married Ted Hughes and even her marriage is very much troubled. And she is fed up with all these troubled relationships that she says they, they, will, they won't be any looking back. Now she won't be communicating with her past, that is her father. The speaker has achieved her double killing. Both father and husband have been displaced. The latter is described as a vampire who had been drinking her blood for years. Now this refers to the troubled marriage of Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes. Coming to the last stanza, the father's demise has them dancing and stamping on him in a jovial way. The girl describes her daddy as a bastard. The exorcism is over and the conflict is resolved. Now we have seen in the, in the previous slide that before the poem that she says she has to reenact the entire scenes to be free of it to be free of the guilt to be free of the uh, overburdening feeling now that she has achieves by the end of the poem coming to the ele electra compl complex now electra complex is a female version of freud's oedipus complex Jung posited that a daughter perceives her mother as a rival for the psychosexual energy of her father and wants to possess her father. This unresolved desire sometimes manifests as negative fixation on the father or father figure. Now yet another analysis is she is daddy's girl. The speaker is daddy's girl and uses childlike endearing terms daddy seven times to describe the man whose memory tortures her. 
During the course of the poem, the speaker's goal shifts from reuniting with her father to killing his memory and terminate his domination. We must also remember certain facts which are embedded in this poem. Now the poem consists of 16 stanzas of 5 lines each. So there are totally 80 lines in the poem. Tetrameter is used. 37 lines are end stopped and enjambment is used frequently. We see the frequent use of metaphor, simile, half rhymes, alliteration and assonance. There are also hints of baby talk like daddy, achu, gobledego and she gets stammery while saying I, 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 I in German. And the poem juxtaposes innocence and pain frequently. So friends, this is it for the poem. I think I have analyzed it from almost all the perspectives. So just go through the poem and keep learning. Thank you so much.